Oh my god. Hey everybody, my name is Gabby and welcome back to my channel if you're a subscriber and hello to any new faces that might be watching this video. Today I'm going to be doing a haul video to show you the books that I have been gathering over the last two months and hopefully I can get you interested in some of them. There are going to be books on my shelf that I do not go over because there are books that I've had prior to planning out my channel. In saying that, I will most likely do a bookshelf tour at some point in the future. I will warn you, my book collection is pretty sad. My bookshelf's looking kind of desolate. The only reason why uh, maybe it doesn't is because I've put stuff there, but this is the only shelf that has books, and then I have five books on the top one and they're manga so they're tiny. That being said, I now am living in my own apartment. I don't live in a dorm anymore and I can finally start filling out my shelves and you and I get to see the collection grow together. So with all of that in mind, let's get started on this video. So the first book that I purchased is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, which I'm almost positive all of you know the story about with Elizabeth Bennet and Mr. Darcy, the sexy, wonderful Mr. Darcy. If you haven't heard the story, I will be posting a link down in the description box below of all of the books that I get today, that I talk about today. I would go over it because I am going over a lot of the books and their synopses. However, this is just too good and I don't want to mess it up. And I'm still I'm still learning how to be better at describing things. I kind of I'm kind of bad at that. The fact that I haven't read this book yet has been plaguing me for a very long time because I am obsessed with Pride and Prejudice like obsessed. I have seen that movie, the 2005 version with Keira Knightley. I have seen that version over 100 times and that is not an exaggeration and my first tattoo is actually going to be a book tattoo uh, with a quote from the book slash movie. I'm still debating on which one I want to do but yeah so like why haven't I read this book yet? I don't know. <laughs> what was that? What's going on? Are you even a legitimate fan? Yes. Do you even read, bro? Do you even read? Of course Imposter. I do. Imposter. You are disgraced to Jane Austen fans everywhere. Okay, yeah, I could see that one. Darcy would never marry the likes of you. That was too far. I need to read this book. So the next book that I got was The Traitor's Kiss by Aaron Beatty, which follows the story of Sage Fowler, a temperamental, stubborn, and unladylike girl who is assigned as the apprentice to a matchmaker. Sage is in charge of keeping an eye on both the girls and the soldiers, vying for the girls' attention. However, due to increasing political tension, Sage's job turns into something a little bit more serious as she's tasked with spying on the enemy of the soldiers. This of course leads to questions for Sage to kind of figure out for herself and in true YA fashion, includes a nice hot soldier for Sage to fall in love with. As if we weren't expecting this in a YA novel. On Aaron Beatty's website, it actually says that The Traitor's Kiss is Jane Austen with an espionage twist. And so since I love Pride and Prejudice, written by Jane Austen, Fake I'm fan. definitely excited to see how this story unfolds. The next book that I got was Vengeance Road by Aaron Bowman. When I first saw this cover, I was like, wow, this is a mighty fine cover. I mean, just like, look at this. This is, this is gorgeous. I hope it focuses. Yeah, like, just look how pretty that is. I can't even, like... Covers are getting prettier and prettier and prettier, like, but anyways. Upon further inspection of this book, I realized that the plot was really interesting as well, which made me want to pick it up. The story follows Kate Thompson on her journey to find the Rose Riders, a gang responsible for the death of her father. Her search takes her on a wild adventure through the Wild West, where she meets people along the way, and I believe finds love as well. However, I've read reviews for this book, and it says that if you're looking for a cutesy romance or a frilly plotline, that this is definitely not the book for you. It's full of revenge, gunfights, 
cowboys and cowgirls and this book is honestly unlike anything I've read before since I've never really dipped my toes into the Wild West fiction waters so I'm definitely excited to read this especially since so many booktubers have said it's a really good read. The next book that I purchased was Tangled Webs by Lee Bross which is actually a book I am almost finished with um, and planning on reviewing as you can probably tell by these tabs. The book follows the story of Arista, a 16 year old girl living in 1725 London. As a young child she was collected alongside many other children um, at an orphanage by an abusive master named Bones who uses the children as beggars in order to make money. Bones isn't opposed to disposing of any of the children that don't serve him anymore so as Arista grows up is forced to make herself useful later becoming a notorious blackmailer that collects secrets and money from people high in society. After confrontation with Bones however a huge fire erupts and burns down their entire home base and supposedly Bones with it. Even still um, she has to partner up with an unsuspecting person to get what she wants and is ultimately forced to make a variety of decisions in the fight to mold her own future. While I am leaving a lot out of this description I am planning on doing a review for this book at some point so that'll be a little bit more in depth once I get there. As you can see I have lots to say so hopefully when I get that up you guys enjoy it. Next on our list we have Meddling Kids by Edgar Cantero which is actually a book I am so excited to read. I actually posted about this book on my Instagram a little bit over a month ago when I saw it at the Barnes and Nobles while visiting Dallas. Merely by reading the title I knew it had to be Scooby-Doo inspired and I love retellings uh, so those two things combined were the perfect concoction for a take my money kind of situation. Where do I pay? Where do I buy this book? I ended up buying it on Amazon just because it's a little bit cheaper but you know this was definitely a, a book I was forced to get. I was forced to. Yeah. The story follows up on the Blight and Summer Detective Club 13 years after they solved their final mystery and each individual's life has somewhat unraveled many due to being haunted by the ghosts of the past. All of them have things that have really gone wrong or amiss in their lives and due to inconsistencies with the crime they solved all those years ago, they are ultimately brought back together to really solve what happened at Sleepy Lake. I think it was called Sleepy Lake. Uh, I think. Yes, Sleepy Lake Monster who was some normal dude just like the Scooby-Doo cartoons. This book is said to have themes from the Hardy Boys and the Goonies and Scooby-Doo and just a lot of those young detective stories so yeah I am really excited this should be a fun and interesting read. Next up we have Ready Player One by Ernest Cline which is about a teenager named Wade Watts who escapes into a virtual reality world called Oasis in order to study and solve puzzles made by the game's creator. For the people that can solve these puzzles fame and fortune are promised which puts a big target on Wade's back when he ends up finding the first clue. Now Wade is forced to you know, race his competitors for the clues or face death by the people rooting for his failure. This book is being made into a movie which is set to be released I believe on March 30th 2018 so if you have been wanting to read the book before you watch the movie then you got about seven months to do it. Next up we have Romancing the Throne by Nadine Jolie Courtney which I have actually already finished. This story is loosely based on Kay and Pippa Middleton with a bit of a love triangle twist. The story follows Charlotte and Libby, short for Elizabeth, uh, who are sisters and best friends who both go to different boarding schools in England. Charlotte is a fashion obsessed, a social butterfly who also happens to go to school with Edward the Prince, whereas Libby is solely focused on her academics and is much less impressed by the shiny items that high society has to offer. Not long after school begins Charlotte and Edward start a relationship that quickly falls apart after Libby transfers to Charlotte's boarding school. At first Charlotte thinks that Libby and Edward getting along is fantastic but over time realizes that maybe Libby and Edward are spending a little too much time together and ultimately realizes that maybe she's not the one that Edward wants to date. So yeah. Wowza. I will say that uh, one of the things that I think really made this book and its love triangle hard to read is that it's completely told from Charlotte's point of view so what she doesn't know you don't know. It's definitely like an emotional roller coaster. at least for me it was. 
The next book we have is To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han, which is about a girl named Laura Jean whose love letters to the boys that she's loved get mailed out by an anonymous source. She only discovers this after being approached by a boy, Peter, who she wrote a letter to in the 8th grade. Fearful that her current crush and sister's ex-boyfriend Josh will know that she still likes him, Laura ends up asking Peter to be her fake boyfriend to make it seem like she's over Josh. Over time, however, Laura Jean's feelings for Peter become real and Laura Laura has to reevaluate her feelings for Josh. This book is also being made into a movie which is set to be released sometime next year. This is actually also really exciting because the main character is being played by a Vietnamese actress which is ultimately staying true to the book um, by making the lead character an Asian American which I really thought was awesome. I'm pretty sure producers would have gotten a lot of crap for that but I'm just glad that they did it. Next up is the Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. I have been seeing this book pop up all over YouTube and so many people have said how good it is which is a large reason why I even knew this book was a thing and also why I decided to pick it up. The story follows Henry Montague, a bisexual lord who has been bred and primed for noble society. Uh, Montague is searching for a lot more than a boring life as a lord however and decides to use his trip across Europe to be a time of excitement and passion, especially since he's going on the trip with his best friend Percy who he also has a pretty large crush on. Unfortunately things go amiss when his actions lead to a manhunt across Europe and since I haven't read the book yet, I don't know who they need to search for or anything like that, but I am definitely excited to find out. Yeah. Next we have the book Furthermore by Tahiro Mafi, which is about a girl named Alice who is branded as an outcast due to being born without pigment. After three years of her father being away, Alice decides to go on an adventure to find him and ends up partnering up with a skilled guide named Oliver in order to find out what happened to her father. I don't know much beyond that, um, however this book has had pretty great reviews and I'm excited to start reading it and I definitely wanted to finish it before the second book Nevermore comes out. I think it's called Nevermore. I believe it's called Nevermore. But yeah, I definitely wanted to pick this up. And kind of a fun fact, I bought this on Amazon and it was actually a signed copy. So I don't know like if he just got this at a like a like a book signing, but like yeah. So I'm actually really excited because um, if I become a really cool fan of this, then I'll have a signed book. So that's something fun. Up next we have The Boy Recession by Flynn Meany, which is centered on the town of Whitefish Bay, Wisconsin and its male population problem. After most of the eligible men, or teenagers or men, I believe, have moved or transferred schools, the girls are now left with a 4 to 1 ratio with the guys, leading to a semi-annoying and problematic dating pool. The story follows Hunter and Kelly, two friends that are both trying to navigate the difficult waters of dating. Hunter is a guitar strummy slacker who hasn't really ever been on any girl's radar until he starts to get recruited by coaches at the high school and Callie can't find a guy because there's too much competition and she's never really been the type of girl to attract a lot of male attention. However she does start to have a crush on Hunter but how in the world is that going to happen if he's being approached by all these hot girls now? Now that he's a a football player or something. I don't know what he's being recruited for. I really got excited when this book came out a few years ago because I fell in love with the book that this author came out prior called Bloodthirsty. It was hilarious and relatable and I am definitely hoping that those same qualities are present in this book as well. Next up we have Blood of Wonderland by Colleen Oakes which is actually sequel to the book Queen of Hearts which I didn't realize when I bought this particular book. Uh, this book continues the story that took place in the first novel and since I haven't read the first one all I know is that the series is kind of an origin story to the Queen of Hearts and that the main character Dina is exiled um, at the end of that and this kind of continues after that um, exile, something like that. God, I'm a mess. I will link both books down below in the description box so that you can read more about it. And hopefully by the next haul I can get the first book um, and I can actually start this series. And finally, the last book I purchased was One Piece. Oh. One Piece Volume 1 through 3 by Ichiro Oda, which is a Japanese manga based on a young man named Luffy. Luffy. Oh god, my boyfriend would kill me that I don't know this. This is his favorite manga. 
But anyways, about a character named Luffy who has dreams of becoming a pirate king. And to do this, he sets off on a journey to find the famed treasure called One Piece and obviously encounters some pushback from some of the other pirates who are also looking to get there before he does. I was recommended this manga by my boyfriend and while a daunting task due to there being 86 volumes in total, I am going to be working my way through until I reach the end. So definitely wish me luck and yeah. And with that guys we have finished this book haul. I hope you guys find some of these books interesting and decide to try them out. I will be linking all of the books discussed in the description box below for easy access and if you like this video please make sure to like and subscribe and follow me on my Instagram, Twitter, and Goodreads account at Gabby the Bibliophile. Bye!